हेलो फ्रेंड्स बिफोर स्टार्टिंग टू वीडियो आई एम अगेन वेरी थैंकफुल फॉर योर वैल्यूएबल सपोर्ट टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एज बिकॉज ऑफ इट ओनली लर्न एंड अप्लाई फैमिली नाउ हैज़ मोर दैन टू थाउजेंड मेम्बर्स नाउ मूविंग टू वीडियो वी आर स्टार्टिंग लर्निंग ऑफ वेरियस स्टैटिस्टिकल टर्म्स एज ए पार्ट ऑफ मेजर फेज फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो एवरी वेयर वी लुक वी कैन फाइंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स विदर वी आर ब्राउजिंग द इंटरनेट प्लेइंग स्पोर्ट्स और लुकिंग थ्रू द टॉप स्कोर्स ऑफ आवर फेवरेट वीडियो गेम Let's understand first what actually statistics is. Statistics are numbers that summarizes raw facts and figures in some meaningful way. They present key ideas that may not be immediately apparent by just looking at the raw data. Here, data means facts and figures from which we can draw conclusions. As an example, we don't have to walk through the lots of football scores when all we want to know is the league position of our favorite team. We need a statistic to quickly get the information we need. why to learn statistics understanding what is really going on with statistics empowers us if we really get statistics we will be able to make objective decisions make accurate predictions that seems inspired and convey the message we want in the most effective way possible statistics can be convenient way of summarizing key truths about data but there is a dark side too statistics are based on facts but even so they can sometimes be misleading they can be used to tell the truth or to lie the problem is how do you know when you are being told the truth and when you are being told the lies having a good understanding of statistics put you in a strong position you are much better equipped to tell when statistics are inaccurate or misleading in other words studying statistics is a good way of making sure we don't get fooled as an example take look at the profit made by a company in latter half of the last year one can say the profit holding steady but it's nothing special whereas other can say this shows the company profit is increasing so how can we explore these two different interpretations of the same data what we need is some way of visualizing them if you need to visualize the information there is no better way than using a chart or graph they can be a quick way of summarizing raw information and can help you get an impression of what is going on at a glance but you need to be careful because even the simplest chart can be used to finally mislead and misdirect you here are two time graphs showing a company's profit for 6 months they are both based on the same information so why do they look so different they give drastically different versions of the same information looking at the graph the first person will say see what i mean the profit is about the same each month whereas the second person will say no this profit is amazing look at it it's increasing rapidly both of these charts are based on the same information but they look widely different what is going on software can't think for you chart software can save you a lot of time and produce effective charts but you still need to understand what is going on at the end of the day it's your data and it's up to you to choose the right chart for the job and make sure your data is presented in the most effective way and convey the message you want software can translate data into chart but it's up to you to make sure the chart is right therefore understanding of statistical concept is very important so let's begin to learn these concepts measures of central tendency a measure of central tendency is a single value that attempts to describe the set of data by identifying the central position within that set of data this is also called as measures of central location the mean often called as average is most likely the measure of central tendency that you are most familiar with but there are some others such as median and the mode mean the mean is the preferred measure of the central tendency because it considers all the values in the data set this is also called as average the mean is equal to sum of all the values in the data set divided by number of values in the data set so if we have n values in the data set and they have values x1 x2 up to x3 the sample mean usually denoted by x bar is equal to x1 plus x2 up to plus xn divided by n this formula is usually written in slightly different manner using a greek capital letter pronounced as sigma which means sum of x bar which is equal to sigma n 
divided by n. Let's calculate the mean in this example. x bar is equal to sum of all the values in the data set divided by the number of values in the data set which is equal to x bar is equal to 647 divided by 11 which is equal to 58.82. However, it is having some limitations too like 1. In order to calculate the mean, data must be numerical. That is, we cannot use the mean when we are working with the data on characteristics like gender, appearance and dress. 2. The mean is also very sensitive to outliers, which are the numbers that are much higher or much lower than the rest of the data. And thus, it should not be used when outliers are present. Median. The median is the middle score for a set of data that has been arranged in the order of magnitude. The median is less affected by outliers and skewed data. For odd number of data points, calculation of the median is very easy. That is, the middle number after arranged in the order of their magnitude. Let's continue the same example to calculate median. Firstly, arrange these data points based on their magnitude. Then, count the middle data point. In this example, it is 55. That is, the data point at the center after counting on both sides at the position number 6. The question comes when, what to do in case of even number of data points. Let's consider the same example after removing one of the data point. In this case, first step will be the same, that is, arrange the data point based on their magnitude. But in next step, we simply have to take the middle two scores and average the result. In this case, it would be the average of 54 and 55, that is 54.5. Mode The mode is the most frequent score in our data set. If we draw a histogram or bar chart of the data, it represents the highest bar in the histogram or bar chart. Let's continue with the same example of 10 data points to find the mode. Here we can see 54 is a score repeated twice, whereas all other scores occurred at once. Therefore, 54 is a mode in this example. Data can have more than one data point which is repeated. If there are two nodes in the data, it is called as bimodal data. Due to time constraint, we will see the next part that is measures of dispersion and some other concepts in the next video. For references, in addition to my knowledge and experience, I have taken some part of this material from a book Head First Statistics by Don Griffiths. If you want to learn statistics in a simple way, I can say this is one of the best books. Now to end, share this video in your entire group to improve their life at professional level. Add your valuable comments and suggestions regarding it. I will be sharing such an important concepts in Lean and Six Sigma usually once in two weeks. If you don't want to miss such useful information on my channel, then click on the bell icon after subscription and select an option of get all notifications. And finally, thank you for watching.